Hello everyone, Ishani here. Thank you for stopping by. Today I have a technique oriented video for you and I decided to play with some watercolors and stencils. We all have stencils in our stash because you know they're quite affordable and there's so many techniques that you can do with them and get a different result every time. And also there are various kinds of watercolors. So let's see the kind of watercolors I am going to play with for my cards today. I am going to use Craft Angles watercolor paper which is 300 gsm in weight and 100% cotton cold pressed paper. And for the first technique I am using this stencil called Flourish. I have cut small pieces of this cold pressed paper and I am using this paper for all my techniques today. I take my stencil and I align it in the way I would like to have the flourishes and I take two colors of brochures. These are intense watercolor crystals, very beautiful and fun to work with. They are pigment powders and I have taken colors in sunburst lemon and alizarin crimson for my project. I start with spritzing some water on my panel and then I sprinkle the two colors. Then I spritz water again till I see my colors dilute. I take off the panel that is just below and because the colors are still left over my stencil, and these are beautiful colors, I don't want to waste them. I put another piece of paper over them. And I also place a heavy acrylic block so that it absorbs the leftover colors. And well, we have a unique design also called the monoprint technique with stencils this way. There's still some color left and I get another piece of paper and let it absorb the colors. So here we have three beautiful panels in gorgeous colors that can be die cut or used as a background for projects or used in any way you imagine. For the next watercoloring technique I am using the stencil called medieval mosaic and I am using distress inks which are fade resistant water based dye inks and they give beautiful watercolor look with this technique. I adhere my panel behind the stencil and with sponge daubers at regular intervals I apply my colors and I am using picked raspberry, squeezed lemonade, tumbled glass and twisted citron. I first put just dots of colors so that they are equidistant and then I blend the two colors together for a seamless look. And then through the stencil, I spritz some water onto the ink and let it react with the water and place an acrylic block till it dries. And here is a pretty subtle colorful background to be used for your cards. For the next technique, I am going to show you how to do resist technique with stencils. And I have taken the stencil called Happy Diwali by Craft Angles and on the same paper, First, I am going to use an anti-static powder tool which I have made at home and apply my powder on the paper and then with Versa mark, I go around the stencil and apply good amount of Versa mark through the stencil. Now once I am sure that the areas are covered, I take clear embossing powder and heat emboss my panel with the clear embossing powder. Now we have the design of the stencil as clear embossed areas and these are the areas which will resist the watercolors. And I am using brushes again for this technique. I have taken scarlet and sunburst lemon. I sprinkle some color and spritz water and look at the vibrant colors. Doesn't it look like a rangoli to you? And you know I cannot waste my color so I take another paper and put it over all the watercolor that I have on my mat. And I have a really beautiful vibrant orange color for another project. Next technique is one of my favorite techniques. It's ink smooshing and I'm taking picked raspberry and wilted violet distress inks for this on my craft mat. I apply some of the ink and spritz some water to get my ink a little runny. Then I put my watercolor panel 
over it and let it absorb all the color. I'm happy with this color but I would like to have a little more violet. So I go again with wilted violet, spritz water and put the color again. And here's my ink smooshed panel ready. Now let's rev it up. I want to make a bouquet background for which I have taken the circle stencil and mask and one of the stencil which has two smaller circles cut. I'm using that with a finger dauber. I'm going to apply white pigment ink through these circles which will imitate a bouquet look. I'm going to overlap these little circles and carry on till it makes me happy. And here we have a very pretty feminine bouquet look background. Next technique is a very basic watercolor stripe technique but I always mess up my stripes. So I thought this stencil called Stripes by Craft Angles is perfect guide for making pretty watercolor stripes. I'm taking the liquid watercolors by Craft Angles. This is Mystical Waters and I dilute it with water and go ahead and make my pretty stripes. You can use the same stencil and make vertical lines, whatever you wish, or the diagonal ones as on the stencil. This is a perfect way to use this stencil without doing all the measurements with scale. And people like me who mess up measurements every time, it is the ultimate way to make stripes. And here is a lovely pretty background ready for making cards, for making scrapbook layouts, anything. Now with our stenciled watercolor backgrounds ready, let's make some cards. So I'm using this panel that we made earlier for a Diwali card. I've taken this stamp set by Craft Angles called Diwali Sentiments and I'm going to take one of the sentiments, the bold one, Happy Diwali and one of the Diyas. I'm using stamping platform. You can use a normal acrylic block and stamp the sentiment and the Diya. I'm using Versafine ink in onyx black and I'm going to heat emboss it with clear embossing powder. The front panel is ready with the sentiment and the dia. Now it's time to adhere this panel on a top folding note card which is in midnight black and I've left half an inch on all the sides for a little interest and a frame. So here is the first card ready. The background was ready with us and it just took two minutes to finish off the card. Let's see how we do the next card. This is the panel that we made with the resist technique and brochures. For the sentiment I have taken Shubh Deepavali from Diwali sentiment stamp set by Craft Angles. And you can use a acrylic block for stamping the sentiment. I am using stamping platform. Because this is watercolor paper on which we are stamping, we may need a little harder impression because in the grooves the ink does not go and it did not go even though I stamped twice. I am using a black marker and finishing off my sentiment. For the card base, I have taken ruby red cardstock and I am adhering my panel in a way that there is a frame only on three sides of the card for a little more interest. And here we have a simple card, yet it is so colorful and bright, perfect for Diwali, the festival of lights. For the next card, let's use the stripe background that we made. I have taken vellum paper by Craft Angles and I am taking the lotus from the stamp set called Hello Lovely. I take Versa mark and stamp on the vellum paper, which I have already treated with anti-static powder. I use a gold embossing powder and heat emboss my lotus. Then I fussy cut it around, leaving a little edge of vellum. For the sentiment of the card, I've taken a black strip and have a beautiful day stamp from the same stamp set, Hello Lovely. I stamp it with Versamark ink and heat emboss it with gold embossing powder. I trim off the black strip and here's my sentiment ready now it's time to assemble the card I adhere my 
stripe background on A2 size top folding note card. Then with foam tape I adhere my sentiment and I've taken double sided tape for adhering my lotus. And here is a simple and pretty floral card with little touch of gold and simplicity of watercolors in the background. For the last card I am using the bouquet background that we made and please remember to use anti-static powder. I used it every time and I forgot where it needed the most. So I stamped happy from the everyday sentiment stamp set with versa mark and I have put white embossing powder over it and white embossing powder is everywhere and it takes time to take it off. I use heat tool and set it. And I'm stamping birthday with the black ink. To assemble the card, I'm taking a black paper which will be used just behind my bouquet panel. It is just a little bigger than the bouquet panel. And I've taken a side folding note card which will leave a quarter of an inch around my bouquet panel. I turned this panel into a birthday card but you could use some festive colors and make it a Diwali card as well. Hope you liked how we played around the watercolors and stencils together and also stretched our supplies. You can check out the description box below for the links to the blog post and various social media handles and the list of supplies used in the video. If you like this, please do not forget to give a thumbs up to this video and also consider subscribing. Thank you once again, be safe and keep crafting. Bye-bye.